I had an idea. I wanted to see if I could build a circuit that would cause a flickering LED using just the components that I own. That meant no 555 timer, no inductors, just a bunch of resistors, capacitors, and some op amps given to us by the university. Oh, and just to make it slightly more challenging for myself, I had to use a DC power source, since I don't own an AC power source. I started off by doing some research, since I don't have the know-how to come up with a circuit like this on my own. And I struggled to find anything. I mean, really struggled. After a whole five minutes checking Google Images and the first page of search results, I was stumped. I did remember a site where you can build and simulate circuits with great ease. So I decided to give it a go. And lo and behold, they had a circuit that would work. I was ecstatic. I thought this was my opportunity to build a circuit and hopefully make a relatively okay video showing how you can build a relatively simple circuit that would cause a flickering LED. There might be one or two hiccups along the way though. Now to take a look at some of the components we're going to be using. On the left here, we start with the resistors, which are used to oppose the flow of charge. Moving on, we've got a capacitor, which can be used to store electrical energy and filter out noise and ripples from a power supply. Then the LED, which not only put, uh, gives off light, but also restricts the flow of current to one direction. And last, but definitely not least, we've got our little op amp here, which is generally used for signal amplification. Very cool component and kind of looks like a spider. So, yeah. Despite my best efforts, I was unable to get the circuit to work the way I wanted it to. And since I had been procrastinating my studying, I thought I should put the project on hold and get back to my calculus. About a month or two later, I had an idea, an epiphany one might say. I figured out how to make the circuit work the way I wanted it to, using just the components I owned. So let's rebuild this one last time and see if we can get it to work. Here's the finished circuit, now we're just going to test it. And will you look at that, we've managed to get it to work. This is probably the part where I should come clean and say that while I technically didn't lie to you, I haven't been completely honest either. This whole circuit has been possible thanks to this special little component, an op amp. But this actually isn't an op amp, it's a 555 timer. The reason that the 555 timer works in the circuit and not the op amp is that while the op amp is great at signal amplification, it's not what I need here. I needed something that could generate time delays and oscillations, and this 555 timer does that perfectly. At the start of this video, I said that I wanted to build the circuit using only the components that I own. And I technically did keep to that. The only way I was able to though, was by going out and buying a 555 timer. Now you may be thinking, Declan, how could you do this to us? We trusted you. My response to that would be, sorry, I couldn't figure out how else to make this work. And since this only cost me five rand, I thought I'd do this for the greater good of, hum of humanity. Now, if we are to take a closer look at these two components, 
we can see that this one is the 555 timer. We can tell by that little circle there. And this is the op amp with the half circle at the top. Other than that and the writing on the top, which you'd have to know exactly what you're looking for, these are virtually identical. So, yeah, that's one thing that I think is actually pretty cool about the electronics and all of that is that so many components look so similar and it's just small things that they do differently that are very useful in different applications. So, yeah, hopefully you're not too angry at me and you've learned something new today. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.